All right, chat. So today we are reacting to a very interesting tool assisted speedrun made by Jarlik, the creator of the zero geo tasks that we took a look at a while ago. Uh, you might remember that one. This is a run of the spellless true ending meme category. It is a very, very interesting category. It's just going to start right away and I'll explain things as we go. So this category <laughs> is um, the goal is to get true ending without picking up a single spell. <laughs> I've talked a little bit about spellless categories before and they're, they're quite, quite interesting. Uh, mainly on how you get out of the very start. What you're going to be seeing is, first of all, these frame perfect nail turnarounds. And what they're doing here is they are using the nail knockback, turning around for a frame and using the nail knockback to push themselves forward a tiny, tiny bit. And this saves like 0.02 seconds per time. So it's not a lot of time save. But it adds up, and this isn't something that's humanly doable for obvious reasons. Uh, so the main thing you're going to notice here is that they're turning around for Fury, and they leave the door here to get a hard save. This is something that human runners do as well. And uh, that means they can quit out and go back to that instead of spawning at the very beginning of King's Pass and having to backtrack all the way around. So I guess I should explain what a TAS is as well. So a TAS is a tool-assisted speedrun. That's what it stands for. And basically, this is a quote-unquote perfect run that has been created, carefully created by a human using special tools and RNG manipulation, and it is being played back. The inputs are, the what you're seeing right now is basically like a long sheet of frame-by-frame -frame inputs being played back by a computer into the game with perfect RNG manipulation, perfect precision on everything, and it is very, very cool. It's something that we do, a lot of speedrunners do, to like test the limits. And you've probably seen a lot of Hollow Knight tasks before. They're very, very cool. Um, so this is not a human run. It is also not an AI. That's a common misconception. Uh, so what they're going to be doing here is they're grabbing Geo, first of all. I want to say I haven't seen anything from this category. Uh... <laughs> So I don't really know too much about what we're going to wa want to watch, but I'll try to give as much insight as I can. I'll also try to avoid pausing. Uh, so they're, first thing, they're grabbing a lot of Geo here. They also got Fury. I'm assuming they're going to buy Crossroads Stag, because most runs that grab early Geo do that. <laughs> Flashback to the Jarlik's zero Geo task. This is obviously very different. Look how efficient this picking up is. I don't actually know what they would be getting more Geo for. So this is played on 1221, uh, but it is apparently supposed to simulate a, a 1432 run or a current patch run. Um, is the volume too loud? I'll try to lower it a little bit. It's a, supposed to simulate a, um, a current patch run. And there's also not going to be any walkling storage abuse because that's the way that Jarlik does tasses. So. Comparative to, for example, Constructive Cynicism's any percent tasks, uh, this is going to be pretty different. So yeah, I assume they were going to be buying Crossword Stag and they're- Oh, that is fast menuing. <laughs> so yeah, what this category means is you're not going to be seeing a single spell being picked up. No Vengeful Spirit, no Dive, no Shriek. And the game is being beat true ending. So the first thing we're going to see here is- actually, Oh, I figured out what they're getting Geo for. So what they're going for is Long Nail. No, Focus is not a spell. Focus is a thing. So what they're going for here is they're going to get Long Nail. Uh, and the reason for this is so that they can do Long Nail Baldurs. And this is actually something you can do. If you have Long Nail, you can do these frame-perfect turnarounds to kill the Balder without using a spell. Which, uh, tell me if the volume is good, chat. I'll try to raise it a little bit. <laughs> which is very good, obviously. Because, you know, you would imagine you would need a spell. That is a very good cleanup. <laughs> so they're setting up a shade skip here, because obviously since they don't have dash or anything, they cannot get um, they cannot get um, to Salubra, which is where you buy Long Nail. So they're going to be just dying, and I'm assuming now they're going to go fight False Knight, get the chest, um, and then come back so that they have enough Geo for Long Nail. Something like that. Because I'm assuming they're going to be using City Crest. No, they're just farming the Husk Guard. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Alright. 
So I don't know as much about this category as I would hope to, but I'm 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 gonna try to <laughs> try to understand what's going on good enough for you know it to make sense. So they're actually farming this <laughs> this husk guard with fury while damage tanking to get fury for Geo because it's faster than fighting False Knight. So because of this, I'm presuming that they will not be getting City Crest. Oh, no, wait, now they're going to False Knight. Okay, interesting. Well, that is certainly an interesting development. So I guess you just needed this Geo, <laughs> is what I'm thinking, to be able to afford everything in early game. It's weird. In a lot of meme categories, this is just how you have to route Geo. Like, there's a lot of weird Geo needs in early game that full game runs don't really have. So, yeah. And obviously, you're going to see a very, very fast False Knights. They're going to be doing some Fury flexing on, on False Knight. <laughs> and by the way, massive credits to Jarlik. Massive shoutouts to Jarlik. He has a really cool YouTube channel uh, where he posts a lot of his tasking stuff. You should all check him out. They are a very, very, very cool community member. Uh, and they've done a lot of really cool other tasks. Mainly the Zero Geo tasks that you've all probably seen, especially if you've watched my channel before. Because that was one I was very excited about. They do an extra cycle there, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why. Jarlik is letting me know in the chat that it was a mistake. <laughs> See, sometimes tassers make mistakes as well. Alright, so they're killing False Knight and grabbing the chest. Which, with the geo farming they did before, is exactly 300 geo. Interesting. And now they're going back for the shade and doing another, um... They're doing a shade skip there. Just to get up to, uh, Long Nail. For the Long Nail Baldurs. So, I'm gonna give you my prediction for this run. A lot of Fury. Probably a lot of Overcharming. And a lot of really close calls with Fury fights. Because remember, this is true ending. You need to kill a lot of bosses to get Essence. Um, to be able to do the TE. And it's going to be awkward. Because here's the thing. Um, Dream Warriors, their health increases when you use nail upgrades. So maybe they won't get nail upgrades is what I'm thinking. And maybe they'll just do like strength and fury overcharmed or something. I'm curious. Alright, so they're going to overcharm long nail here. And as they go to the balder... They're going to stag to Dirtmouth, first of all, because it's faster to go there. Because uh, obviously walking all the way over to the Baldur takes a long time. They leave the shade there as well. Because obviously they're not going to need soul. <laughs> so they just don't need to get the shade again. This is not a category where you use spells at all. So you don't really need shades. I'm assuming that shade is going to just stay there until maybe a blue lake shade skip. Because they, I wasn't paying attention, but I don't think they picked up City Crest. So they're damage tanking for Fury right here. And here is the first thing, the staple of spellless runs. I've taken a look at the regular spellless category. Here's the Long Nail Balder. <laughs> Obviously for Tass, it isn't a problem at all. Everything is frame perfect, so it's not even hard. That is doable by humans. Uh, albeit it is a lot harder and pretty much frame perfect. Um. <laughs> so yeah, you don't need Vengeful Spirit to kill that Baldur. You can just long nail it. You can also use Dream Shield, and that's a little bit easier, but it's a hassle to get a lot slower. Yeah, so obviously you're seeing the, the nail turnarounds here a lot. Uh, from here, I'm expecting just pretty much your standard go to Hornet, get dash. Obviously, they're going to have to do the um, this thing here. They don't have Vengeful Spirit. This is a spellless run. So, the whole shade skip, or sorry, fireball skipping thing, you know, for obvious reasons, really isn't a possibility. <laughs> and I'm assuming they're going to do the nail knockback strat here. Watch this. Yeah. That is called the Sedic slash uh, Fireball Skip Skip. <laughs> and uh, using the Nail Knockback off the enemy 
and off the platform, you can actually make it without a single fireball. That is doable by humans. It's called Setic Slash because it was found by a runner named Setic, who found a lot of strats related to nail knockback. Mainly the quote-unquote Setic Slash in fungal, in the big fungal drop room in the beginning. So yeah, just a lot of, lot of nail slashing going on in the start of this run. Uh, not too much else to say. I'm assuming they're getting this Geo here, just because it's pretty fast with Fury. Uh, yeah, they're getting it all. I'm assuming there's no good setup for a fast VK where the Geo ends up in a neat and orderly pile. So that's the best thing you, you can go for when you... They do get Moss Knights here. Okay, this is interesting. Moss Knights are very awkward <laughs> without spells. Because when you have spells, you can kind of kill both of them at the same time. Yes, this is a Jarlic Tass. Of course it's a Jarlic Tass. Hell yeah. And I'm assuming they're buying green... Not buying green path stack. Okay, so they're going to be using Dreamgate probably to get the... Um, the essence here. Or going up through Queen's Gardens on the way through. Or uh, through Fog Canyon and getting no eyes from there. That makes a lot of sense actually. Obviously, just bullying Hornet in the corner. Since they don't have Vengeful Spirit, they can't do the full task bully. But, you know, I would say this counts as bullying as well. <laughs> that is as fast without spells as humans can do fights with spells and fury. <laughs> very, very impressive. Nice pogos as well. I've edited the stream title, by the way. Yeah. I guess I'll... Do I have a task command? I think I do. Alright, so they're gonna quit out back here, and now we have Dash, and I'm, I'm assuming the shade was left there so that they can shade skip. Uh, that is my guess here. Getting Dream Nail early, of course, so that they can get Elder Who on the way through, um... Sorry, on the way through, uh... Frick, what's it called? Why, why can't I name areas right now? Fog Canyon. So getting Sly for Lantern, probably. Uh, and this is going to be a no fireball shade skip with dash and no claw. So, very spicy. Just observe. <laughs> very, 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 very interesting. Very awkward, I, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> not, not your usual shade skip, to say the least. You just don't need fireballs when you're tassing. You know, who needs them, you know? Who needs them? So now they're getting Dream Nail. And that the, the reason we're getting Dream Nail this early in a run like this is so that you can get Elder Who uh, on the way through uh, Fungal Wastes to not have to go back for it. And the reason for that is obviously so that you can get Essence, start getting Essence earlier. Because otherwise you would have to return after getting, like you would have Claw and then you ha would have to return to Fungal and that's just slow. So true ending runs, also just regular true ending does this does this as well. It's just a staple of the, the true ending routes. But yeah, a lot of task shenanigans going on, you know, a lot of very, very optimal movements. Since this is on 1221, it is faster to do that dash off. Uh because the seer spawns faster the second time, obviously. How does TAS actually work? It's with a program called LibTAS and through using system clock manipulation on Linux that RNG manipulation is possible. Because what you do is you create a consistent base value for RNG and then every single game action will change that input to the consistent. Because the start value is the same. Every consistent game input at a given time will always lead to the same outcome when it comes to RNG the RNG value, that is, which affects the randomness throughout the entire game. So, because you can find a consistent start number, also doing Seer Skip here. And we'll open Resting Ground Stag here. This is a good free stag. Oh, whoops. Am I still streaming? I'm having like a recording error right now. <laughs> that should not be bothering anything hopefully so they're getting zero on the way uh, which is interesting i would have assumed they would just stag to um all right is this some kind of air walk setup it is 
All right, and obviously Fury is still gonna destroy. You don't need spells. Usually with spells, you can kind of just like multi-hit with Shade Soul or Vengeful Spirit on zero. And just kill him basically immediately. Doing... Yeah, so the reason they're not doing the uh, the Dream Nail buffer right here is because this is trying to simulate like a current patch run, even though it is on 1221. So they're going down to City now. Um... I'm trying to figure out why they would go to City this early. I would guess Geo is the main one. City just has a lot of Geo. You know, all the relics you can get. Gorgeous Husk for Lantern. Uh, they are not getting Dash Slash, probably. Because there's no reason to do that for Shade Cloak. Why is it done on 1221? I don't know. Just the Tasser's decision, really. Getting this relic right here, getting a nice early control from that, and then farming the enemies for Geo. Everything is perfectly planned. Navigating around the hitboxes perfectly. Up slashing that enemy and dashing under. Did you notice that? <laughs> That's kind of a swag move. So right here, I'm assuming they're going to buy the stag here. And they're going to get the Geo. Doing an insta bell there. They're not getting this relic, which is interesting. Uh, but I'm assuming they're gonna fight Gorgeous Husk. Notice how they're overcharmed right now. So, they are overcharmed. What they did right there was a turnaround insta bell, by the way. Oh, yeah, you can't get the relic without claw. I'm just being a dummy. So, they're gonna be strategically damage tanking to get Fury very quickly. <laughs> and then, you know, just bouncing Gorgeous Husk upwards. There you go. Picking up every single piece of Geo perfectly. How long does it... So a task like this usually takes months to make. <laughs> it is a lot of work. Because you have to, you have to like, create the entire thing frame by frame, basically. There's a lot of copy and pasting for a lot of sections and a lot of types of movement. But it's still a very painstaking process. Especially if you want to try different RNG patterns until you feel like you get a good enough one. They are very, very long. Very, very long process. And especially if our run is really long, they take a while to make. Alright, so now they're going through to Fungal. Uh, just like the regular True Ending run, they get the cr uh, the Crossroads tag. It's just the fastest one, since they haven't been to Mound in a while. And they're going to be damage tanking along the way as well, which is interesting. Getting this Geo Rock. 400,000 frames of input is uh, what this run includes, according to Jarlik, which is a lot. So there's a lot of very interesting geo farming in this route. There's not a lot of other categories where rocks are really the most viable way of getting geo. What I'm assuming is they're buying is strength. I mentioned that in the beginning. Um, that strength is probably gonna, gonna play a big thing, because nail upgrades are gonna increase the, the Soul Warrior's health. And since your nail output, since your only damage output is nail, you still want damage without doing it. So Fury plus uh, Strength is a very good damage boost. So Fury would be 9 damage. Actually, Strength would be a 1.5 increase. So Strength would be, what, 7.58 damage? Plus Fury would be 0.75 that. So here they're just... Bonking the Shroom Logers. The reason they're doing this is for that extra Charm Notch and also Geo. is probably a very valuable resource here. Um, the Notch is going to give them full HP Fury, which is important to mention. So Charm Notches in Hollow Knight heal you to full health. And this is just a mechanic. It's been for, like, multiple years. I think it became a thing on, like, the Hidden Dreams update or something. Um, but what is interesting is that the Notch heals you to full health, but Fury isn't programmed to get removed upon having full HP. Or sorry, upon getting a Charm Notch heal, by the way, is what I meant to, meant to say. Also ignore just this Elder Who fight, it's gonna be over in like three seconds. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Fury isn't meant to, uh, or is it, it isn't programmed to disappear with Charm Notch heals. So if you get a Charm Notch heal with Fury active, you can trick the game into letting you have full HP Fury until you update your health again. So until you take damage or bench or heal, I don't know why you would heal on full health, but I guess you can do it. Or uh, change your charms, I guess. The game is gonna let you keep Fury forever. 
So they're getting an alert through here, obviously for that early essence, which is, you know, you need 1800 in this RNG. Uh, or sorry, in this category. I can't words right now, please help. Um, and yeah, they're just getting claw now, and then I'm assuming it's going to be a quit out. Unless there's something else weird going on. They already have a king station stag, so I wouldn't imagine them going anywhere on left side right now. So what they're looking for is Geo. Probably gonna see a lantern purchase pretty soon. Uh, it is possible that they open the spirit glades and get the relic from there. So you're gonna see here uh, just a nice mantis pogo. That's what RNG manipulation lets you have. And there you go, there's Claw. I'm assuming actually they don't quit out here. Because you probably. Oh, they do, okay. I imagine you would see a um, claw early control. Um, and I realized that the reason they wouldn't want to do that is because they wanted to keep Fury. So they're equipping strength now, making them very powerful. Uh, dealing a... I'm going to do this quick calculation on my phone, because I'm not sure on the exact number. But it'd be, it would be 5 times 1.5 times 1.75. 13.1... They do 13 damage per nail hit. Uh, and that is the same amount as you would do with two nail upgrades. With Fury, that is, when they have Fury active. So they're getting the Well Seal here, and that's obviously for Lantern Geo. And it seems like they're going to Gorb already. So this is a really interesting route, and it really deviates from regular True Ending, which is kind of expected. Like, doing a run Spellless has so many implications with the way you have to go through the run. <laughs> Um, but it seems like there might actually be nail upgrades, because I don't see why they would do it this early, unless... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it's some kind of early pale ore, and what you're not wanting for Geo is Lantern, but it's nail upgrade. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe they are getting quite heavy nail upgrades here. Which I guess would make sense, since there's so many other fights that aren't dream fights. And notice how they're getting the dream fights out of the way as well. Um, so yeah, damage tanking here. And they're going to be damage tanking Gorb as soon as it starts. Just like that. And he's also going to be done very soon. Obviously, there's no chance of even dying. Because all of this is calculated in advance, basically. They're going to heal strategically here twice to be able to do Gorb early control. So that Vengefly is stuck very much on a little border. That that exists in that arena to prevent the Vengefly from entering and interfering with the Gorb pickup. But if you Dream Nail on the very corner, you can get knocked out of the um, the animation and get early control. So they're going to get this idol right here. Uh, and that is just for all of the Geo that they need. <laughs> A lot of these fights are very cool. Just seeing how even with regular nail hits, bosses can just get absolutely push pushed around is... Really mesmerizing to me. I think it's really interesting to uh, to look at. And uh, you don't, you really don't need spells. For us speedrunners, are used to just melting most of these dream fights with spells right away. Um, but this is a very different way of just like bullying them. So what we're seeing here is they're gonna be opening Spirit's Glade probably. I don't know if they're gonna get that relic since they already got Idol in um in cliffs but they're gonna be getting the pale ore so i'm imagining they're gonna upgrade nail pretty early uh if that's the case yeah they're getting the glade idol interesting i would imagine you need a lot of geo because they're probably gonna buy lantern just because the axis of no eye so this is a trick called Rev revicless right there those dashes are really precise and they use a strat called trans dashing to make them possible and a trans dash is when you interrupt your dash towards a wall with a jump and transition the directional momentum outward, which pushes you pushes you outward and then continues the jump. So instead of like jumping diagonally outward from a wall, you go like kind of up and around, which allows you to clear a lot of corners that you usually wouldn't. And also, yeah, blessed name, trans prides in the chats. So yeah, now they're getting this relic that they had dash. Or, sorry, Claw. <laughs> and we're probably just going to see Nail Upgrade now. 
They're gonna talk to Lem and then upgrade Nail is the most likely outcome here. Uh, it is gonna hurt them a little bit in the the dream fights because the dream fights are gonna have a lot of health. But since they also have strength and fury, they still like they still outpower the dream warriors pretty significantly because of that. So since this run is meant to kind of like mirror a one two two or sorry a current patch run, they are gonna be just doing this instead of the lever skip. Still gonna be killing this big boy here. Pretty interesting to see the fastest maneuvering you can do with only Nail around him. And he's gonna die pretty quickly because, you know, fury and strength. Very, very big guy. This one is just gonna be killed because it's just in the way. And I'm assuming they are gonna be heading straight over to Lem, followed by Nail Upgrade. So they do seem to need a little bit more Geo here, outside of what they've already collected in Relics. Uh, which is a pretty interesting detail. So the Geo route in this category is very, very tight, it seems. Because there's so much, like, rock Geo. Um, and, like, even on top of the massive amount of relics they already have. Which is really interesting. And it makes a lot of sense. Just because you're trying to shove in as many nail upgrades as you can in the very beginning of a route. Also, mods, can we add uh, Jarlix links to the task command? They do skip Rafter's Seal, which is interesting. According to, to Jarlix. He's in the chat, by the way. Everyone, uh, claps to Jarlix in the chat. He's the creator of this amazing task, uh, among others. You've probably seen the Zero Geo task before. So, big, big, big love to Jarlix in the chat. He's very cool. Alright, so just dashing over to the Nail Smith right here. And you're noticing they're not doing any nail turnaround slashes anymore. And the reason for that is obviously that now we have dash. <laughs> it's just faster to always be moving forward and dash in the direction that you're trying to go. There was another trans dash right there. You might have seen it just to get around that corner and not be stuck on the wall as long. So, let's see how many nail upgrades they have. They only have one Paylor, so I would imagine only two. At least I'm pretty sure they only have one Paylor, unless I wasn't paying attention properly. Yeah, I feel like this checks out. Two nail upgrades, and then the rest is for Lantern. Yeah. That sounds about right. So, their nail, their base nail now deals, deals 13 damage, and they have Strength, which is one times 1 1.5, which would be 20 damage. And times 1.75 for Fury. They are now dealing 34 damage per nail hit. Which is quite a lot. <laughs> that is a very, very hefty uh, damage output. 35 rounded up. So it does actually round up on, uh, on every single calculation. Which is interesting. I thought it was rounded up at the end. Uh, which is, you know, a weird thing on Team Cherry's parts. Because if you round it, if you calculate it. You know, 13 times 1.5. That would be 19 point what? 5? 13 times... Sorry, I'm gonna make this calculation. 13 times... Um, hold on. Let me... Alright, so they're going up to peak now. Because they bought Lantern, by the way. I wasn't paying attention. I'm just trying to calculate the damage numbers. So 13 times 1.5 is 19.5. Yeah, I was right. So this is rounded up to 20 times 1.75. 1.75, and that would be 35 damage, yeah. It's weird that they don't round up at the end. So you're gonna see the Pogax here, our beloved Pogax. Very, very nice. T stands for true ending, so basically the regular Dream No More Radiance ending. A lot of very, very clean movement in peak. What is interesting to look at is how the cycles are still fundamentally the same to what humans do. There's just no faster way of getting around <laughs> all of this. Uh, so they're not getting shopkeeper's key, and the main reason for that is that well, there's really nothing of of interesting of, 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 of ah, words of interest to the task there, because you know you don't need elegant key for shade soul, because well, this is a spellless run. <laughs> um. So yeah, a lot of inventory drops here. 
and they're going to be getting C dash. I would imagine they're quitting out immediately after C dash. There's no real reason to go to the lower side of peak. Unless they're going to go for another pale or in crown, which I doubt. Because I feel like after you've done the two nail upgrades, that's already a lot of damage. I don't think it would be worth it just because of the geo investment that you really need. Mods, can we add uh, CC's links to the... I'll do it, actually. Actually. Can one of the mods do that? To the uh, task command. Just replace all the links to CC's tasks. Or sorry, to uh, Jarlik's tasks. Task stuff. Since it's, you know, more relevant. So yeah, they're getting C-dash and they're critting out back to city. Um, and what's happening here is... Well, now they have C-dash. So all of the movement is going to be a heck of a lot faster. I could see a Watcher's fight here. I could see this being a Watcher's fight moment. No, okay. They're going to... Um, they're going to do Broken Vessel Lostkin first. Interesting. I don't know why. Quick Slash does need Dive. They're not going to get Quick Slash. I think this is the build they're going to stay with for the rest of the run. Just Fury and Strength. Maybe Dream Wielder? I don't see why you would really use Dream Wielder. I guess Wings makes your vertical movement a lot more useful, which is very, very interesting. I would say uh, the main reason I could imagine doing Lost Kin and Broken Vessel first, and I guess they would go into Failed Champion right after this, is Dream Gates. Um. Getting Geo from this rock, which is very, very interesting, you know. Not the Geo rock you would expect to get, but hey, with Tass, Geo drop, RNG manipulation, you can actually pick up most of that instead of all of it just flying into the spikes. And interesting, so they are going to be using Dream Wielder, being confirmed by Jarlik in the chat. And that is just for the time save of using Dream Gates, <laughs> which is also part of the reason they got the extra notch. Because they didn't really need full HP Fury or anything, because, you know, they're not going to die. Getting a nice uh, damage tank there. Here they're going to do the regular trans dash strat, just like that. Wow, okay. That's really sick. <laughs> Doing a nail knockback boost into the wall <laughs> instead of dashing. Kind of a power move, honestly. It's really interesting. So this is a, these are fights that speedrunners depend 99% basically on spells. And seeing this done this way is very rare. That is very fast. <laughs> they are doing a lot of damage per hit. 35 to be exact. That is a very fast fight. That's faster than runners can do that with spells and everything. And they're going to be doing Lost Kin straight away. I'm curious to see what this Lost Kin is going to look like. I'm assuming it's going to be some kind of stun lock type thing. It usually ends up being this way with passes. So they're going to be face tanking in the beginning, obviously, to get Fury. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> nice. The good follow along with the dash right there. Basically a stagger lock, kind of. The boss is pretty helpless. I mean, given that everything is predetermined, this boss has... <laughs> Look at them playing around with the balloons as well. Not killing a single one. And the reason they're doing this is for the Death Warp, uh, which I assume they're going to be getting right about now. It's actually a different timing on 1221, and it saves a lot less time on this patch rather than on current patch where you can do the Death Warp a lot earlier. Uh, the difference is pretty big. And their masks are glitched. They have zero health according to the UI. They do actually have full health right now. Uh, it just looks funny. <laughs> That's a good visual glitch right there. And they're getting wings now. So they have what? They got zero Elder Who, um, Gorb, and Lost Kin. How much essence do they have? I wasn't paying attention. It should be eight or 900, I think. Because 400 from Lost Kin. Gorb is 100. 
Uh, zero is 200, right? No, zero is 100. Sorry. And Gorb is also 100. Or sorry, Elorhu is also 100. So I think they have 800. So they, they will do failed champion uh, before. Nice insta bell. I'm very curious to see failed champion. Because this is also a fight that in speedruns is dominated by spell use. This is like we just use spells. Because our nails are usually worthless by this point. This is a very different run. Wow, okay. Wings makes that a lot faster. <laughs> nice insta wings. That is some very rapid upward ascension. So, through frame perfect execution, you can trigger wings as soon as like, and not lose any height or any speed or have any sort of animation to um, slow you down. Because you know, usually wings has a little bob. Uh, and you can do that through nail hits as well. It's a sort of animation canceling. All right, let's see this failed champion. I'm very curious about this. Using the rock as well. Very careful navigation of hitboxes. Let's see this. This is what I'm curious about. The tantrum phase. Oh. <laughs> I'll be honest. This looks like a false knight fight. <laughs> so, because... Um, Jarlik has um, hitbox viewing tools when creating the tasks behind the scenes. You can do perfect just maneuvering around hitboxes. It's like not even a problem at all. It looks really shady to us because we're used to, you know, being like, oh yeah, if you're in the maces, you're going to get hit. No, not really. That's not exactly how it works. <laughs> Not exactly, you know? There's there's a little bit more to it. Alright, so they have a thousand essence now. Which means they're gonna be going to... Uh... Actually, sorry, they had 700 essence before, not 800. And yeah, another thing to mention is that False Knights, or Failed Champions, um, Mace actually has a hitbox. Which is part of the reasons runners can do triple hits on Failed Champion. Because you're swinging with the mace, you're fireballing with the mace... As it like swings across the room, you're fireballing along its movements, allowing you to keep dealing multiple hits with the Shade Soul. So you can just hit the mace with your nail. And this is actually a strat that humans do as well in Pantheons if they mess up uh, the, like just the, the quick stagger. Alright, so I'm imagining they're gonna stag now to, um, they're, yeah, so they're running, they're equipping spell to, or Dream Wheeler here. And this is because they just got Dreamgate. And Dreamgate is going to be very, very important for um, for the routing. Because, you know, there's a lot of different places we need to go to. Uh, a lot of Dreamers and Dream Fights we need to get. So we're going to see Hornet 2 right now. And there's going to be a pretty nifty... Um, I don't know if, which kind of Acid Skip they're going to do. Look at this Fast Ascent. That is the, the instant wings triggering. So what they're doing is they're using specifically timed nail hits. Yeah, they're doing the regular strat here of getting into the, the other hitbox area. Or sorry, hazard respawn area of um, of the right side. This is a human strat. This is what regular true ending runners do as well. They don't get Ismus here. So what they're doing on this these fast ascents is they're using nail hits to cancel the wings animation at specifically pick times to delay the wings animation triggering uh, and prevent the dip from wings allowing you to just go instantly upward <laughs> all right so obviously they're gonna be damage tanking right away I imagine this fight is gonna be very fast uh, it's gonna be over before you can say Shaw Higala Edina you know yep there you go <laughs> that's the speed of a Hornet one fight <laughs> crazy dude just stuck in the corner absolutely stuck in the corner nothing she can do against the power of tool assisted speedruns uh this is why i really like watching tasses because they're just this is the limit this is pushing the game to its limits in no major glitches at least according to you know certain rule sets but this is what the game looks like at its limits and i think that's the most exciting part about Tasses for me. Because everything just looks so cool in Tass. <laughs> T 
stands for true ending, Luskar. Everything just looks so cool in TAS, and that's what, what is really exciting to me. Like, there is... Even regular movement just looks really awesome. As someone who is a speedrunner, you really just get an appreciation for how optimal everything is and how calculated every aspect of it is. And just watching it play out is amazing. So now they're going to be getting Shade Cloak, obviously. There's no getting Shriek here because, well, it's a spellless run once again. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to get Walkling Storage off this, just like a regular human Walkling Storage. They opt not to do it. Might not be faster, actually. They're doing a slightly different Abyss Descent here. With an inventory drop right there into a C-Dash. Nice. That's a new strat. I haven't seen that before. The most common strat runners do, from, um, from what I know, is a double inventory drop along the, the route below the the door, kind of. Let's see this Abyss Ascent, <laughs> the lighthouse climb. Yeah, that's really fast. <laughs> Instant wings is truly something to, uh, to behold. It's just really cool. <laughs> Alright, so we've got Shade Cloak now. Uh, so I imagine they're going to be doing Markoth pretty soon. Um, they might do Markoth right away since they're already around the King's area. I actually imagine that to be the case here. This is a run, a task run of Spellless True Ending. Um, doing a Dream Gate early control on this thing and just leaving right away with a Dream Gate. You can do a Dream Nail early control. The thing runners do. So I'm imagining they're gonna be fighting uh, Zero here. Or sorry, Markov. I keep mixing up the names of those two. Because Markov is a nice, what, 250 essence? It's quite a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I feel like a lot of people who um, who have done P5 are gonna get a lot of gratification. Why is this category tasked even exactly? Because it's fun. <laughs> it's a fun category. Fun showcase. Why not? Exactly. So everyone who has ever been annoyed or struggled at Markoth. Pay a close attention to this. I think this is going to be very gratifying to look at. <laughs> yeah, just hovering. That is, that is just beautiful. I don't think I have a way of just saying anything more than that. That is just beautiful. That is just a gorgeous fight. <laughs> and they're going to be quitting out here. Yeah, just, yeah, if you're struggling with P5, you know, just do that, lol. Not hard. Yeah, so probably Watchers right now is what I would imagine. Watchers into Lurian, into Dreamgate out to King Station, into probably going towards the Umu area and doing all of the stuff on the left side. That is at least what I would expect right now. And the Watchers fight is probably expected to go pretty rapidly. A lot of these fights <laughs> are... So fun fact, Watchers actually do get buffed by your nail upgrades, but it is only at nail 2 and 4, I believe. And it's a very small amount. So notice how they're not even breaking the chandelier. It's just faster to not break it. Gonna be damage tanking for Fury on the Watcher. 5, 6, 7. 7 hits per Watcher. <laughs> it's 3 and 4, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bye, Watcher. You're dealing 35 damage per hit, so. Yeah, they die pretty quickly. <laughs> Watchers have, what, 220 health each? So seven hits of 35. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of damage. There you go, there's Watchers. Bye, bye, Watchers. Only took a couple seconds, really. Just, uh, the very chill fight. Getting the Geo, I'm assuming they're not gonna get the Relic here. Yeah. I think there's not gonna be any more Relics. Yeah, the input of the inventory was likely for RNG. Inputs, uh, it, menus are good for RNG manipulation. 
Because you can just move around extremely quickly in the menus to do a lot of RNG manipulating inputs uh, in a very quick succession. So those are also very beautiful climb <laughs> with the insta wings. So I kind of explained that earlier, how that works, roughly. Um, but you don't really need to know too much about about instant wings except it fast. It do be pretty fast. <laughs> so nice stream gate early control right here, just leaving right away. Not even gonna say hi to the to Lurian's butler or anything. Because we just don't have time for it. Uh and yeah, I'm assuming they're gonna be doing Umu and everything in that direction. You know, getting Monomon, No Eyes, uh, Traitor Lord as well, and all the Queen's Garden stuff. Probably Umu, or uh, sorry, Marmu and Galleon should be the last essence they need. I'm pretty sure at this point. Can humans do insta wings? Yes, but they are frame perfect. Um. All right, so we're probably gonna see a lot of just toying around. Also. Not even an acid skip, just a dash and a uh, a wings there. Because who needs acid skips? Just a solid drop through this room as well. So, by the way, I never explained this in the Zero Geo task. The reason we don't, uh, you don't see these tasks do the Umu insta kill that you see, for example, the any percent task, um, is because this is a no walkling storage abuse task, um, and you need walkling storage to get the the jelly to enter the Umu arena. Because you need to be moving at a specific angle for that to work. In this case, Jarlik is also saying in the chat, as you can see, that it's apparently faster as well. Because the jelly has set up time. So, keep in mind, 35 damage per hit. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot of damage. Uh... If this isn't a one cycle, I'd be very surprised. It's a guaranteed one cycle. There is no way this isn't a one cycle. So, yeah, just uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Hard boss chat. <laughs> that is a very, very difficult fight, as you can see, for the tasks. Some more, basically any time uh, you're seeing vertical movements, they are going to be doing instant wings. Because it allows you to ascend upwards at such a rapid pace. <laughs> and since it's task, you can just do it on every single jump, basically. And you can just go really fast upwards. Makes it really cool to watch as well, because the it looks like it's sped up, you know. Sometimes when you watch task movements, it looks like it's sped up. That's how perfect everything is when it's getting pushed to its limits. So here's something interesting. They just did a Dreamer quit out. And these have been timed to be a little bit faster. They did it on the other run as well, by the way. I just forgot to mention it. These have been timed to be faster RTA as well. Like, categories like any percent have started doing these. Um, or not RTA. They're, they're faster in loadless time. But, you know, RTA as in human runs. So, yeah. They're going to be setting a Dream Gates... Somewhere along here. Nice <laughs> killing one of these jellies um, for early control. Okay, they're not going to be setting a dream gate. Sorry, because they already have one really close in uh, in archives or outside of archives. And they're going to be killing no eyes here. So no eyes is a really awkward fight. I'm curious to see what this looks like with RNG manipulation. Because if you don't know, Noise has a 33% chance to teleport away after every hit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's about what I expected. Uh, a couple teleports. Oh, okay. This is really cool to mention. That is a Dream Nail drop into a spike. Dream Warrior early control. That is really cool. <laughs> So just like you can do physics frame perfect inventory drops on current patch, you can do a dream nail drop. And if you have dream wielder, also nice QGA, by the way. I don't think I even need to talk about QGA. It just explains itself at this point. It's an acid skip. 
you can you can do a dream nail drop and you can if you time it you can interact you can dream nail no ice fall into the spikes and get early control very very cool strat uh, and yeah that no ice fight is a testament to how powerful rng manipulation is of a tool because you know just killing things immediately <laughs> she has a 33 percent chance to teleport on every hit and she also just teleports randomly she never teleports in that fight like in a way that is inconvenient. The the task is always able to like keep dealing full speed nail swings. No, focus or heal isn't considered a spell because you can't not pick it up. So I'm assuming right here, the reason they have so much geo, they're gonna be buying this bench. And this is just not not for healing or anything, obviously. <laughs> the task doesn't need health. They're going to be on 1 HP basically all the time. Um, but this is actually so that, that you can quit out after Trader Lord and head off to Queen's Gardens. Or sorry, to Deep Nest for Hera and all that stuff. Um, so interesting is how they're going to approach this arena. So probably going to damage... To, yeah, getting down to Fury makes a lot of sense. Something to note, I don't think it's even relevant, but the spinies, the ones that, you know, leave a carcass on the floor when they die, their attacks are on a different layer. Team Cherry placed their attacks on the their dam like their, their needles on the wrong layer on this patch. Uh so they just their attacks just don't deal damage. They deal contact damage still, but their attacks just don't deal damage at all. Uh on this patch. And I think you saw them just dash straight through one. When they didn't even have Shade Cloak. It might have just not hit. This is... <laughs> also a testament of how powerful RNG manipulation is. If you've seen a run of Hollow Knight... I mean, you don't even have to have seen a run. If you've been here in your playthrough... You know it's impossible to not get fucked over by the frogs. Tass is doing this on 1 HP. And... It's not a problem. You can just manipulate our, all the RNG. It's fine. Oh, that's so satisfying. <laughs> RNG man manipulation in TAS is everywhere. And it's part of what makes this end result work so well. If it wasn't possible to RNG manipulate, the TAS would just desync. Because you can't do boss fights. Why was he in 1 HP? Well, it's a task and it's Fury, so like, <laughs> why not? You want that Fury damage. So, another thing to mention, this is played on, on uh, 1221 to simulate current patch. Just out of preference of, of Jarlic the Tasser. Something to mention, Traitor Lord is not a powerful fight on this patch. He deals like no damage and he only... He deals one health damage on everything, and he has, like, no health. <laughs> he only has two attacks. He is basically just a big, uh, big Mantis Trader. I would say he's even easier to fight. Nice random essence. <laughs> yeah, that was, like, three seconds. No, the, the, the channel you were looking for to watch this task... No, 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 that's the wrong command. Exclamation mark Jarlik is what you're looking for. This task is created by Jarlik. Jarlik 2 on YouTube. There you go. Rix, can you update the uh, the task command to have Jarlik's links just for convenience? At least for today, since it's more relevant. And yeah, that's the first King's... Uh, um, freaking... <laughs> King Soul. That's the charm. King Soul Fragments. 45 minutes in, 46. 47, basically. And it's deepness time. So they do actually have lantern because they needed to get it to enter peak since they can't get dive to enter peak because, well, spellless run. Um, so it's not going to be any dark deepness shenanigans or anything. Also, they would have needed lantern for no eyes because otherwise she doesn't appear. But it really doesn't matter whether it's dark or not <laughs> for Tass. It's all the same. So they're setting a dream gate here, and I think what you're going to be seeing right here is this dream tree. Um, 
And this is another thing. Nice random essence as well. <laughs> I think Jarlik deliberately tries not to mess with uh, random essence manipulation too much. Just because it's going to take too long. But that dream tree is taken to account for all of the essence used with dream gates. All the way throughout this run. So because of that you can assume... Because they have four extra, you're gonna. I can assume that there's gonna be less than four dream gates in this run from this point on. Um, so yeah, Galian probably also gonna die in the span of a couple seconds. It is really interesting how much or how quickly they still die. These dream warriors, uh, despite the fact that you've upgraded Nail, I think that's because you have both strength and quick slash, which don't factor into the. Um, not quick slash, sorry, strength, strength and fury, which don't factor into the um, the dream warrior's health. So despite them being nail upgraded and having a lot more health because of it, um, you still have fury and and quick and strength. So you still kind of outpower them. The progression. They make the fight faster if you don't. Really? <laughs> I actually didn't know this. I thought it was just a fury and strength type thing. It is just a relative damage thing then. Interesting. I thought they actually were longer when you have more. Not as much as damage. Oh, okay. It still slows. Okay. Either way, with uh, with fury and, um, and strength, you're still dealing so much damage. I'm sorry, chat, okay? I'm just a wee little speedrunner lad who is too used to his spell builds. Forgive me. <laughs> Probably gonna see another dreamer quit out right here. Yep. And these save a second or two, I believe. Uh, gonna spawn right outside the dreamer. With the Dream Nail Early Control. Um, so they have enough Essence, I believe, at this point. I wasn't fully paying attention, honestly. <laughs> uh, to the Essence number. I've been, I should have kept a better track of that. Um, but yeah, now they're going to be heading to Resting Grounds. Getting Awoken Dream Nail. And then it's everyone's favorite White Palace. So what they're doing here is a... Um, no, Dreamgate, Wazanki, Dreamgate is actually set in Deep Nest to make the, the backtracking for Galeon faster. Getting the stag is worth it. So yeah, you're going to see a Woken Dream Nail right here. Look at those fast jumps. Uh, and then you're going to see White Palace. Uh, just the regular ascension of... Um, no, not Seer Ascension. This is in 112. A Woken Dream Nail, White Palace, uh, Birthplace... And then uh, it's THK and Radiance, which are probably going to be very, very, very fast fights as well. <laughs> Judging from the rest of this, you know, I'm about to make a very educated guess and say these fasts are gonna go fights are going to go back by quite quickly. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of a genius, you know, with that, that estimation. I'm curious to see this Tass White Palace, though. Because they don't have Dash Master, and they don't have any of the other things that, like, an IL run would have. I'm, I'm imagining they're going to damage tank the King's Molds for, um, for Fury, though. And just play the entire thing on Fury, because there's no reason to damage tank in White Palace. Yeah, just face tanking this one, and they're going to have Fury for the rest of it. So who's ready for some parkour chat? I wonder if King's Mold skip is faster with this. That's what I'm curious about here. It is possible that King's Mold is not faster. Okay, it is. The the damage is quite heavy. Like 35 damage per nail hit makes it, it makes sense that King's Molds are still faster. Yeah, they get 5 hit with Fury. <laughs> Sag. Still waiting to see King's Mold skip in a task, okay? You hate to see it. Alright, let's see the rest of this white palace. 
Obviously, a lot of it is going to be dominated by just perfect, really fast vertical movement. There's a lot of vertical movement in White Palace compared to other parts of the game. Uh, I want to see what cycles they're able to catch, though. That's what I'm curious about here. Like, what non-human cycles can you catch with uh, with Tass? That is a very clean C dash. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I was imagining something like this. <laughs> Um, let's see here what they're able to do. Wow, okay. That is basically like the Dash Master cycle I go for in 112, but without Dash Master. Because, <laughs> you know, this computer is not the computer, obviously. But this task is better than you. Deal with it. Not even with Dash Master can you stand a chance. I blinked and missed the last two rooms. <laughs> yeah. That is the, the, the TAS experience, really. Okay, so I'm assuming they're gonna squeeze past the... the you can actually catch a very fast cycle. Yep, yeah, they're squeezing through the, the size of it. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful vertical movement. There's- it's really hard to find things to say about this. I feel like it speaks for itself in a lot of ways. Just beautiful movement. They're gonna fall through here, because obviously they can't do the dive shortcut. That's a regular human strat. There's a- not really a way to fall faster in that section. Um... Notice how, like, every wall jump is an instant wings. Like, follows- is followed by an instant wings. That's why they're doing so many nail hits. If you're wondering why Tasses do a lot of nail hits, either they're nail hitting uh, an opposite wall to push themselves back towards- That's actually the most common. They're nail hitting an opposite wall to push them closer to the wall so that they can wall jump again faster. And a lot of the time, they're just doing weird instant wings shenanigans. Let's see this drop. Just a nice, clean drop through. That's why Palace done in like... <laughs> you know, very quickly. I wasn't keeping track of the exact time they entered, but that is really, really fast. Obviously skipping the left side here. Jumping up to the very corner there. And look at these quick ascensions. It's... It truly is mesmerizing to, to look at. <laughs> this is why I really love Tasses. They're just fun to watch. Like, every new one, even though you've seen the strats before and how it works, they're just always fun to watch. Because <laughs> they're always going to find a way to blow your mind. Like, even for someone that has seen a lot of Tasses for Hollow Knight at this point. They're just always really cool to watch. <laughs> Alright, so what they're going to be doing now is equipping King Soul right here. They're going to be over charming it into their already full charm cram crammed build. And it is time to ascend. Or sorry, why do I keep saying Seer Ascension? I mean, they're going to get Void Heart. I want to see the Abyss Climb. That's what I want to see. I want to see this Abyss Climb. Abyss Climb would be fun. <laughs> that would be... A, it's going to be fun. Abyss Climbs are already really mesmerizing to watch by human runners. They're like one of the most exciting um, segments. Because they're like one of the few parts of fully like unaltered vertical movement, which is always the most fun part for me with Hollow Knight movement. Like, it's like the, um, you know the, the, um, Crystal Peak Hollow Ness Crown climb? That one and, and Abyss Climb are, like, probably my favorites. This is sub-hour <laughs> so far. This is right about tied with the regular, like, true ending world record, and this is Spellless. Pass optimization is very crazy. 
we're in late game. We're watching a task. <laughs> Or sorry, not sub hour, it was sub 56 minutes. My bad. I wasn't being smart. Look at this climb. Everything is just perfect. The routing here through these are really interesting as well. Especially the, the bottom part was really cool to look at. You know, how, how, chat? How's the pure vessel still faster? How is the Hollow Knight still faster? How did they reach the top faster than that? They must be so fast. It's like Lem. You know, you know when you race Lem back to his shop after talking to him in the rain? He's always faster than you. It's not fair, you know? He must be cheating. <laughs> Just quitting out right away. Uh, who's ready for THK and Radiance? <laughs> They're just gonna slam on, um, strength. Onto that, Lem is just a task. Who knows, maybe he is. I guess we'll never find out. Lem is always behind the door. You can no clip it, low clip in and sell to him. So Lem has like an evil twin brother then. <laughs> Alright. There's Hornets. It's time to watch this end. <laughs> Once again, another amazing task. Uh, big shoutouts again to Jarlik. Uh, not only for creating it, but also to, for giving me permission to, to take a look at it. Um, these are always really fun to look at. Look at. Sub 1? I think it's probable. <laughs> I don't know how fast is THK. And Radiance fight is gonna be actually sub one is probably unlikely here. I'm not sure though It really depends I think sub one is not happening. I didn't look at the final time uh, Before I, I started the video Either way, it's really impressive All right, look at this just Melting. <laughs> there we go. Second phase already. So notice how they're walking to the middle already. And this is because the uh, the scream is already queued up. <laughs> they dealt so much damage in the first phase that they did the scream for the second phase and the, the scream was already queued up. <laughs> okay, this might be sub 1. I think this is sub 1-able. Depending on this radiance. Oh, it's gonna be close. The timer's in the top right corner, by the way. If you haven't seen it already. <laughs> That's so funny. That's like the best THK fight I've ever seen. That's just beautiful. So obviously there's nothing to damage tank right now, but you know, as soon as they can. Obviously the radiance deals 2-4 damage when overcharmed. They're just gonna be hovering. And you can stand in the middle of that attack. Um, the... Uh, the burst of needles in all directions. You can fit right in the middle. I'm assuming this is gonna be a similar situation where like the Radiance's climb phase is gonna be queued up right away. <laughs> Basically after this attack. Yeah, it's not sub one. Yep, there you go. They're hitting the Radiance right before the one hour mark, but the cutscenes are going to make it a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> GG's. GG's. Just like that random ass fury effect just vibing in the bottom. Beautiful. For all intents and purposes, that's a sub one, okay? We can, we can shift reality a little bit when it's a task. Okay. If if we consider that Jarlik added an extra cycle on False Knight, who knows? That is faster than regular human true ending <laughs> with spells. GG's. Everyone GG's to Jarlik. That was that was really cool to watch. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Jarlik, for making this. That was that was an awesome show. That was really impressive. As always, these tasks keep getting better and better, and they're always really it's always really fun to see. Um, especially when when people decide to task these like a little bit out of the uh, the ordinary categories. Like, sure, you could go in and do a regular true ending task, but you know, on the other hand, you could also do a spellless true ending task. And make it, like, a really quirky category that has a lot of weird and cool stuff. <laughs> I think that's really nice. It's a little bit less serious in nature, but I think that's kind of the charm of it, of, like, picking a nice uh, meme category and just making it crazy. <laughs> hey everyone, so I know I haven't been uploading in a little while, and yeah, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, I've been started to work on some a little bit bigger projects. I've been like scripting and stuff, so that should be exciting. Uh, but in the meanwhile, you can come around to my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash blue underscore sr underscore. Link is in the description, uh, where I do 112% all Pantheon bosses speedruns every day. Uh, I've been trying to get the world record recently, and we've been getting a lot of progress, and uh, we might get there in the end, so hey. Yeah, I guess I just kind of wanted to get a video out in the meanwhile until I'm done with bigger projects, so yeah. Also, once again, big shoutouts to Jarlik for making this task and allowing me to react to it on stream. Uh, his channel stuff is also in the description if you're wondering, so yeah, check his stuff out.